Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to switch it up a little bit and we're going to talk about a new program I'll be releasing called D2R Launch. Um, now, if you've played our in-house mods like Remodded or Vanilla++, Plus Plus, you may be already familiar with the launcher it uses. Um, enables a lot of quality of life features and uh, additional options, things like that. Um, we're essentially porting that to the public so that all mods can benefit from it um, and uh, just make use of it. Um, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, definitely stay tuned for the rest of the video. We'll uh, dive into how it works and some of the things it can do. Um, and with that said, uh, if you guys are enjoying this content, make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps out. And let's roll right into it. Uh, so in the download, you're going to be presented with a single folder called D2R Launch. Now inside that folder, we do have some of our custom programs split up, uh, but all we care about is extracting this main folder uh, to wherever you'd like. So whether you'd like to put this folder on your desktop or your Diablo 2 folder, etc., uh, just go ahead and put it where it's convenient for you. Um, so I've already done that and put it on my desktop here. And then once opened, uh, once you open up that folder, you'll find again, all the different programs we have. Uh, so the one we care about right now is just gonna be the launcher itself. So we're gonna go into launcher folder and run d2rlaunch.exe. Um, you should be presented with something like this when it first boots up. Um, but if you get an error about not having .NET or something like that, um, then definitely check out the um, Windows uh, link that will be provided in the video description below. Uh, but essentially, we just need to download the .NET desktop runtime. Um, for most of you, you're going to download the 64-bit version. Uh, if you have a really old computer or something, then you might need the 32. But again, most of you just download that 64, uh, install it, and then uh, restart the launcher, and you should be good to go. Um, so once you've done that, you should see it uh, this, just like everybody else. And now we can talk into kind of what the mod what this uh, program does and a little bit of how it works. Um, so uh, one thing I have pulled up is on the left-hand side here, um, I have my mod folder for Diablo 2. And I have a ton of different mods installed just so I could kind of test different uh, configurations out and stuff with the launcher and make sure everything's working. Uh, but if I select this mod choice dropdown in the launcher, you can see that all those same kind of mods uh, populate in the dropdown. So I can select any of those mods, uh, you know, whenever I want um, and launch that particular mod through the launcher, as you might expect from a program called Detour Launch. Um, but it will also enable a lot of other features that we're going to uh, talk about here. Uh, but just know that it does work for any mod. Um, you know, as long as you have it installed, it'll just kind of pop in there and you can start, uh, you know, selecting it. Um, so. Uh, couple of the key features with D2R launch is that it does have special options that are enabled um, or that can be enabled. Um, so as you can see, you got all your kind of more boring stuff, like uh, whether you want map regen or uh, character respec enabled, changing your languages, things like that. Um, we have some special options for like forcing map layouts, um, uh, swapping UI themes. Uh, there's a lot of quality of life controls in the additional option sections for changing font auto backing up your characters, enabling different item display options, uh, all sorts of stuff. So anyways, I uh, won't bore you with every single detail in this video. Just know that it has lots of additional features uh, beyond just uh, launching your mod. Um, so with that said, um, some of these features are still controlled by the mod author. Um, so they have a special configuration file they can edit uh, to enable or disable things as they'd like. Um, and if a mod author doesn't want to kind of opt in to the launcher at all and just doesn't bother with it, then you can still use this as a launcher with many of the quality of life features enabled. You just won't have certain features enabled, like for example, the customizations feature, which allows you to change monster density, uh, unique packs, uh, item drop rate, all that kind of stuff. Um, the reason for this is pretty simple. Um, we choose to honor the, the mod author's intent um, and so whether they chose to disable those options because, uh, you know, maybe they spent 200 hours balancing monsters and items and stuff and they don't want you, uh, you know, just kind of messing up their, their intent uh, by, you know, just moving the sliders and stuff around. Um, but also just, uh, again, we don't want to rip content from, from authors or anything like that. Um, we truly respect all the work they do um, and give us lots of uh, time to experience things. I'm one myself, so I understand uh, how frustrating that can be. Um, so anyways, 
um, as you can see here with Remodded, we currently have customizations disabled. Um, that's largely because we're in alpha and we just don't want to add extra variables to uh, balancing and all that kind of stuff. Um, but if I were to switch to something like Vanilla++, Plus Plus, one of our other in-house mods, um, you can see that customizations automatically is enabled now. Um, you can also see that the news and such switched when I changed my mods. Um, so again, with that special configuration file, um, the mod author can give the program a custom icon to use, uh, whatever news posts it wants to populate. Um, if you check out our resources section, uh, they can link their Discord, their Wiki, their Patreon, all that kind of stuff. Um, everything will customize to the mod author uh, without them ever needing to compile the program or anything like that. They just edit a single text file and they're ready to go. Um, so. Uh, just as further reinforcement, I'm going to select some random mod. I don't know who Caleb is, but seems like a good guy. Found his mod on Nexus Mods for testing, so let's just select that. And if we select that, we can see that now some of these options are grayed out. I can't select them. We can see that the news has kind of reverted back to like a, a default uh, D2R launch news. Um, talk about the, the actual program and recent D2R news, things like that. Um, and you can see that some of the options are, again, uh, now disabled. Um, this is because this particular mod has not opted in at all. They haven't edited any file. And so this is kind of the default state. Um, again, you still have uh, options you can control. You can still change font, add uh, item icons, all that kind of stuff. Um, but things that require extra files um, or uh, things that are going to change the gameplay substantially, like customizations, um, are still disabled. Uh, so I hope this has kind of helped understand that the biggest takeaway from this is that, yes, it enables you to use this as a universal tool to um, not only launch and control mods, um, but it is still based on the author's intent um, because we feel that's very important um, and we try to, to honor that. Um, so obviously, if they want to enable customizations, then it's an easy as typing, typing in enabled or disabled uh, to control all that. Um, but that is kind of up to them at the end of the day. Um, and so if they've opted in, you can see here this check for mod updates button. Um, another feature of this launch program is that it's self-updating. Um, so not only does the launcher and the vault program, which I'll show off in just a minute here, um, do those update themselves, um, but uh, the mod files can be also set to auto update. Um, so they can specify a version. Um, again, I'll, I'll, there'll be a separate video for how this works with mod authors. But as a player, all you need to know is that when you click the check for mod updates button, if they've opted in for launcher support, um, then it's going to automatically find out if you're on the latest version or not. And if not, download and install the most recent uh, mod files from them. Um, so uh, it also acts as just a quality of life improvement there, no longer extracting zip files or checking, you know, 20 websites or discords, etc. cetera. Um, their news, if there's a new version, will automatically populate. Um, and you can just click the check for mod that's button to uh, get everything going. Um, so uh, with that said, let's just quickly roll in. I'm going to go let's select remodded here. And we should see now that the we have access to the vault that updated our icon, all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and show the vault. This is our kind of program to allow infinite uh, item storage for your kind of in-game items. Um, so as you can see, I can like load different characters and whatnot. I don't know, sort of load Drew here. Um, and you can see I can browse some of the different items that he's wearing. Uh, it looks like this is a new naked character. Um, see if I have one with some actual stuff on there. So there you go. You can see all the different things they have. Um, you can look inside the shared stash and see what's, uh, you know, in your actual stash. Um, and, uh, you know, all that is done through here. Um, in the item gallery, uh, you can view all the different unique items and such. Um, and again, this is just all access through launcher. Um, it's currently disabled for uh, mods that are not our in-house mods, but that's uh, only because I, I need to work out how to uh, enable that for multiple mods. The big complicated program that I'm trying to resurrect and uh, that'll just take time. Uh, so anyways, uh, that's some of the things you can do. we got quick access to like mod files and stuff. So uh, it'll take you straight to the correct folder, depending on what mod you have selected. Same thing for any of your save files or uh, anything like that. So a uh, pretty powerful tool overall. Um, really uh, thank you guys for being patient and sticking around to the end of the video. But I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Take care. Bye.